people don't even have to look for some grand uh, goal in the sky, some elevated goal of what they're going to do, whether it's a financial goal, whether it's a, 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 a non-profit goal, and they're going to... They could look around their bedroom and figure out what they're going to do right now well, to one, improve things. One of the things I learned from reading Solzhenitsyn is he talked about his moral transformation in the camps. And he said the first thing that transformed him to some degree was looking at people in the camps who did refuse to do immoral things no matter what. He said he ran into people like that. And that just blew him away. Because you already laid that out. It's like these are... He said they were continually choosing between their life and their conscience, and they chose their conscience. Like, and, and he tells some amazing stories in the Gulag Archipelago about you know, dozens of people he met like that, met like that and they're just they're stories that, of heroism, moral heroism under uh, absolutely vicious conditions there. You just can't believe them, you know? So, so that's pretty amazing. But he said that once he kind of figured out that there was a difference between attending to your conscience and doing whatever was necessary to prolong your miserable existence, that he started to think about that deeply and that he went over his life with a fine tooth comb and tried to figure out everything he did that he knew was wrong. And then to try to figure out what he could do in the present to rectify that. You know, you wouldn't necessarily be able to, to atone. That's the right, that's the right way of thinking about it. You know, you, you do something wrong and well, maybe you can't even fix it with the person you did the wrong to, but maybe there's something else you could do that would be good enough so that, you know, you can think, okay, well, at least those balance out and maybe I'm a little bit on the side of the positive. So he did that, you know, and that he said that straightened him out a lot. And then he wrote this book, this amazing book that, you know, cut the communist intellectuals off at their knees and and changed the world, really. And that's a hell of a thing for someone to do who's a you know, miserable Zek in a, in a concentration camp. That's a hell of a story, man, and it's not the only one like it. So you don't know how much power you have where you stand, even if you look weak and, and, and if what's around you is terrible, well, then you've got lots of things to do, that's for sure, and they're announcing themselves right there. So, and, well, and it's tying it in with evil and suffering that is best for me because it's so real. You know, it's like you can be skeptical about the existence of the good. But if you, if you open your eyes and you do any amount of studying and even any amount of self-examination, you can't be skeptical about the existence of evil. I don't believe that you can. There are things that read about Unit 731 and then see how skeptical you are about evil. I wouldn't recommend that, by the way, because that's, that is so horrible that you can't really read it without being traumatized. It is unbelievably horrible. You read that. And then you say, well, morality is relative. It's like, see if you can utter those words after reading that. And then if morality isn't relative and there is evil, then there is good. It's at least whatever isn't evil, right? You can, whatever doesn't cause that is good. It's sort of defining it by its opposite, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. It's good enough. And so how do... How